how humans learn, learning and remembering. Are they the same? I don't know. But our memory kind of acts like putting stuff in a storage locker, our long-term memory. When we get information, we encode it. That means to organize it. It would be like putting things in specific boxes, your dishes in one box, your sports stuff in another box. To store is to actually put in long-term memory. That would be like putting things in the storage locker. And to retrieve is to get them out. And of course, the more organized that storage locker is, the easier it is to put things in, because you know exactly where to put it, and to get them out. If it's all higgly-piggly, you don't know where to find stuff. Now the question is, is learning and remembering the same? I ask unto you. Not necessarily. We know that memory is necessary for learning, but learning is not necessarily for, member, uh, for memory. Memorizing stuff is not necessarily learning. But people who do remember things tend to be strategic in how they encode and store. They intentionally call specific mental processes and they learn strategies about learning and remembering. We can also say the same thing about learning. They are strategic. Some strategies. Here's some strategies for remembering. The least effective is simply rehearsing things. The more effective for remembering things, and this is also for teaching. Teachers know this to help learn. This relates to encoding and storage. Meaning making, relate the new to the known, so it means something. You notice I used an analogy early, a storage locker, something with which hopefully many are familiar. Make personal connections. How does this information connect or intersect with your life? Seek structure and organization. That's why it's so important to have lesson plans to show students the structure, advanced organizers of what is to be learned. When you are taking notes, trying to encode and remember stuff, we use headings and subheadings so we can see the structure. Elaboration. Expand on it. Make it different somehow. When I'm learning new information, I always write in the margins to elaborate, to connect it to something. And visual imagery. Form some sort of meaningful picture. Other things about memory and learning, the basics. Hot cognition. Thoughts and memories are emotionally charged. We tend to remember those more. A flashbulb memory is a memory of a significant and emotionally charged event. We tend to have exact or, or pretty strong memories of that, like 9-11. Cognitive dissonance. When new information contradicts something we strongly believe to be true, it creates this dissonance. And that can be important for learning as we talk about Piaget and dis equilibrium. For example, if you came in the room and saw a floating gal in the middle of the room, that would create some cognitive dissonance. Whoa, what is that? And you'd have to find out. Too much anxiety reduces memory or learning. If you're too tense, uh, the, the uh, cognitive resources used for remembering and learning are put elsewhere. And knowledge enhances learning and remembering, encoding which is organizing, storage, putting it in, and retrieval. If I'm learning about Ed Sykes stuff, I have some knowledge there, so I can easily see the structure and know exactly where that goes in the storage locker. I can put it in the right place, and I can retrieve it. Memories. Press between the pages of your mind. Memory, we don't burp it up. It is not replicated. Our memories are not like Recorders, by the way, these are all prom pictures from 1976. Now, in my memory, it was a magical night, a magical evening, dressed in my dad's suit coat. But I'm sure if I went back in time and could see it exactly, it, it would be nowhere near the type of picture in my mind. Because memory reconstructs, it does not replicate. Long-term memories are not always an accurate record of our lives because we take in some of the data, but we are using the information in our head to fill in the blanks. 
So we retrieve patterns from that experience, structure, but we use the information to kind of fill in the blanks. So a reconstructive error is filling in the blanks incorrectly. Memory never exactly replicates. We kind of pick up the major patterns of events and memories and we fill in the blanks. Some of the basics of how humans learn, learning, and memory.